Welcome back. I'm Shane. This is Relative Time. And today I want to talk to you about one of the hardest things you can do as a watch collector. Decide what to take with you on vacation. And to make things even more complicated, I've decided to only bring two. So let me back up a little bit and give you some more details. In a couple weeks, I'll be going on an eight day cruise to the Caribbean. And since space is always a premium in the cabin, I don't want to bring too many different watches with me. So I've decided to only bring two. One that's a more water capable tool watch, and one that's more of a dress watch for dinner. Although they don't necessarily need to be a straight diver or a straight dress watch, as there is something to be said about having watches with some hybrid features that can be used in multiple situations when you're on a trip. So I thought it'd be fun to go over some of the watches I'm thinking about. And to be fair, I'm way overthinking this, but that's also because I never gave you guys a good state of the collection this year. So think of this as sort of a mini or a preview state of the collection before I can get to a real one. Now, before we get to it, I know I've said I'm only bringing two watches, but that's not entirely accurate. I am actually bringing a third that I am set on. So bear this in mind as we go through it. But this is the third watch I'm bringing. It's the newer Garmin Instinct 2. I've had this for a little while, and at some point I do want to do a quick video on it. But the short version is that it's a good GPS running watch. Right now I am trying to get back in better shape, and part of that is that I have committed to doing a half marathon at the beginning of next year. So I sort of use that as an excuse to get this to help me train for it. It really is an awesome watch, and if you're looking for a GPS watch, I highly recommend it. But the real reason that I want to bring it is honestly just because I want to see what happens when I try to use it as I run around the track on the upper deck while we're moving through the ocean. It's kind of stupid, but I just really want to have a map of me running through the Caribbean. Regardless, just bear in mind that I'm already set on bringing a very capable digital G-Shock-like watch with me. But let's move on to the tool watches I'm thinking about. Now, for this trip, I don't think I'm planning on doing any actual diving, but there'll definitely be some snorkeling, some beach days, and some pool time. So a water-capable watch is a must. And with that in mind, the obvious choice is a diver and I've got plenty of divers to pick from. I got everything from Vostoks all the way to this completely crazy and overkill 3000 meter Zelos Abyss 3. Honestly, there are too many options here, and while that is a good problem to have, it can still sometimes be a problem. But in terms of regular divers, I'm kind of leaning towards my two new favorites. The first is my new Glacier Marine Master Reduced. It's a Seiko, it's pricey for what it is, but I love this thing. The case is both beautiful and comfortable, yet it's really this dial that steals the show. It is a diver, but it's a great looking one, and one that wouldn't look out of place at a nice dinner. I am planning on bringing a more dressier looking watch, but sometimes it is nice to have options. The second diver is the Zealous Spearfish. It's definitely more casual than the Glacier Seiko, but still eye-catching in its own right. It's a great size, very capable, and I know this is one I can easily wear all day. And that's thanks to its quick adjust clasp on the bracelet. So say I'm on shore on an excursion and it's hot and humid and the watch is starting to feel a little tight, then no problem, just extend it out a notch. Or if I wanna bring an extra silicon strap, the quick release bracelet is easy to swap out. Not to mention the 68 hour power reserve is nice when traveling. As long as you wear it every three to two days, it should still be good. And to be fair, the Glacier Seiko also has that. Of course, the idea has occurred to me that I may be going way overkill on this, and that maybe I should just bring something more budget friendly, like my OG Vostok, or maybe my Orient Kamasu, or maybe even the Antarctica Monster. Something not quite as expensive, and that way if something were to happen to it, I'm not out too much money. And in that regard, maybe I'll worry about it less. Although I am curious about your thoughts on that. When you're traveling, do you ever worry about your nicer watches? Let me know down below. Maybe that's really what I'm overthinking. Anyway, I'm also considering a few more unusual options. And one of them is the San Martin 62 Moss Chrono. There's no doubt it's a good looking watch. It's got good loom and it is a diving chrono, sort of. You have a timing bezel as well as the chrono functionality but it is only listed at 100 meters of water resistance. And to be fair, that should be perfectly fine for what I'm planning, assuming San Martin was actually accurate on that. And in some ways, that would be one of the interesting reasons to take it, just to really put it to the test. Which is also one of the reasons I'm thinking about this next one. 
I recently bought one of the new Seiko Arnie's to review, and it would be nice to get some real world footage and experience with it. But at the same time, in any Digi watch might be redundant with that Garmin. Now, since I am traveling, the other obvious choice would be a very water capable GMT. And right now, I think this is my second choice after the Glacier Seiko. And this is the Christopher Ward C63 Sealander GMT. Kind of a mouthful, I just usually refer to it as a C63 GMT. In some ways, this is an Explore 2 homage, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And in some ways, I think it's actually even better looking than the Rolex. It's a great looking, extremely comfortable, casual watch, as well as one that's highly functional with the GMT movement, really good loom, and 150 meters of water resistance. When I bought it, it just came with a strap, and I recently got the bracelet for it. And just like the Zello Spearfish, it has both quick release end links and a quick adjust. So you get all the same benefits, plus more here. And you know, now that I'm really thinking about it and talking about this out loud, it might be the obvious choice. Although along the same lines, I could kind of split the difference here and go with the Zealous Horizons GMT. Great watch, great GMT, but I would lose the quick adjust on the bracelet. And I think the same is true for the Notice Duality. One of the Duality's greatest strengths is its fantastic finish. It's an amazing looking watch with a rather clean, straightforward dial. And the dual time internal bezel could be used as a pseudo GMT. Honestly, I have too many choices here, and I do realize that I am overthinking this. But like I said, think of this as sort of a mini preview state of the collection, since I didn't really give you a real one. But when it really comes down to it, I think the two I'm really leaning towards is the Glacier Seiko, as well as the Christopher Ward C63 GMT. Now for the dress watches, or maybe dressier watches is a better term, I also have a number of choices. And up first, we have my old standby for traveling, and that's the Champagne Dial Hamilton Khaki King. I've had this one for almost four years now, and I still love it just as much. And I especially love the versatility when traveling. Technically, it's a field watch, but it's a great looking field watch. And one that I think can easily pass as a dress watch in a pinch, which is why I've always loved traveling with it. It's relatively thin, lightweight, but I can wear it casually as well as wear it out to a nice dinner. It really is a great go anywhere and do anything kind of watch, and especially on a good leather strap. Although along the same lines, there could also be my Ghost Alpinist or maybe even the Ryan Hellcat as a dual kind of watch. But as much as I like those, the Hammy's always been my go-to for travel. Now, taking the dressy up a notch, we have the Orient Star Cheshire, or Orient Star Standard as it's officially known. I absolutely love this one as well. It's one that I've always considered to be a Saab 033 replacement. And in that way, it's a dress watch that I think can double as a sports. It's one that looks great at a nice dinner, but I don't think it looks completely out of place in shorts and a t-shirt. So again, a great, but maybe dressier option. Which is something I can also say about the Seiko Mojito. To be honest, I've actually come close to selling this watch a number of times. Just because I have way too many dress watches and I don't wear them enough. But every time I take it out of the watch box and look at this dial, I just can't. It's mesmerizing, it's hypnotizing, and it's everything great about the Seiko Cocktail Time lineup in a slightly smaller package. And perhaps it's one that's a little more comfortable, as well as a little more casual with the Arabics on the dial. Then there's the Second Hour Mandala, and this is another one of my favorites. It's thin, lightweight, comfortable, and relatively capable with 100 meters of water resistance and a screw down crown. So it's a watch that isn't only restricted to dinner time. Now, technically this is a sports watch, but when a dial looks this good, who's really gonna nitpick it? And as a side note, I think this list really shows you that clean, simple, classic dress watches really aren't my thing. Regardless of what they're classified as, I'm more into gorgeous looking, complex, and visually intriguing designs. Ones that sort of capture you and just draw you in. And that's one of the reasons I'm also considering the new Zelos Comet. Although to be fair, it is kind of similar to the Mandala. And between the two, I actually like the Mandala better. Sorry Zelos. And lastly, perhaps a more interesting or unconventional choice with my Casio Oceanus T200. It's more casual, it's also considered to be more of a sports watch. And it's also more simple, at least compared to my other choices. 
Yet, at the same time, it is perhaps more capable. It's solar, so I don't really need to worry about setting it. And if I want to take it off the ship, I can just sync it with my phone and instantly have it updated to local time. So potentially even an alternative to one of the GMTs. Lots of options, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts about them. And for me, there's always that kind of thought in the back of my head that if I'm going somewhere, I should bring a watch that I haven't finished reviewing, just so I can get some extra footage of it and some more real world experience with it. And on this list, I think that might be the C63 GMT as well as the Arni. Although for this trip, I am trying to focus more on having fun and relaxing rather than trying to mix in some work. So right now I'm really leaning towards two specific sets, either the Glacial Marine Master with the Hamilton Khaki King or the Christopher Ward C63 GMT with the Second Hour Mandala. The only reason I wouldn't pair the Glacial Marine Master with the Mandala is because I don't want two blue watches. Now, I still got a few weeks to think about it, and there's always the possibility my wife's going to chime in with what her favorites are. But until then, let me know what you think about all this down below. Would your picks be based around some sort of strategy, or would you just go with your favorites? And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, see you next time.